In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good people, it is Tuesday, Tuesday of week 25 in Ordinary Time, and we are on day six in our novena for business two. This is novena two. And I, I continue to talk to our choir members, a very important group in the church. And we are talking about the, uh, the church music, and what it is the intention. And I want to start from where I ended yesterday. I made a statement that uh, church music serves and prepares the table, but it is not the feast. How I would pray that all our choir members, men and the women, can only get that. You can forget everything. What church music does, however, it clears the room of the heart, a mind that comes in so busy but doesn't feed it with its own busyness. Sacred music and church music in particular is a beauty that prepares us to be able to receive the fullness of grace in the holy sacrifice of the altar. It does not replace it as worship. I love that. Church music does not replace it as worship. It does not become an end in itself. And as beauty is not self-indulgent, but it points to the earth real. Church music or sacred music, is that beauty that prepares us to pray. Uh -huh. It prepares us to pray. That opens our heart to receive the word within us. Now you understand the reason why it is not advisable for choirs to sing the songs that the congregation does not know. Please note that. That is why there is that provision that once you have practiced your singing, the same music is taught the congregation that we try our best not to have a choir singing alone from one corner and the rest of the congregation, they seem to be like a people who are in a stadium being entertained. If you are preparing a people to pray, then they must sing alongside with you. Thus, sacred music must have holiness at the center. Sacred music must have holiness at the center. And that is why, particularly in the Catholic Church, Every music that is produced must be subjected to theological concreteness. Because if our music is not theologically sound and correct, then that music is not supposed to be used for worship. Because, as we have said, our music must have holiness at the center. It is not entertainment. It is not a contest. No. You don't go to bed, think of music, write music, and come and teach it. No, you can't. I remember some times ago, I was working in a, in a radio station. And I remember we, have a whole, we had a whole department. People would bring their CDs. And we had a whole department that subjected that music into what we call theological proof. Proven that this music is not against the teaching of the Catholic Church. The same happens today. In fact, it would be, it would be very bad if choir teachers come and teach music that is not given an okay 
by the Office of, uh, uh, the office of Evangelization. And every, every, every parish has its own way of authenticating music. It has. So your priest is your point person. Your pastor is your point person. But you can't say that, no, I am the choir teacher, I know everything. Yes, you do. But you are not the church pastor. You are not. There's a difference between you and the parish priest. That is why if the parish priest is unhappy with that music, he will say, this song cannot be taught here. There is a pastoral office in every diocese. And whatever we teach our people must be subjected to that committee and that it must be okayed to be taught. So you can say, no, these priests are not musicians. They are not musicians, but they are theologians. Allah. And your singing is part of pastoral work. So if you cannot be corrected by your priest, if you cannot be corrected by your pastor, then go and join presidential commission. Sing there. Kama hautaki kuabiwa kitu, neda ukaibie serikari. And even there, by the way, let me tell you, even there, you cannot sing music that is, that is anti-government. So there is nowhere you can sing and you cannot be corrected. If you want to be that big person in church who cannot be corrected, please go and sing in your bedroom. There, you are okay. You are your own boss. You authenticate your theology. <laughs> you do everything. But if you are singing in church, please allow yourself to be corrected and to be guided. Because as it were, as we have said, is that uh, your music must have sacredness at the center. Sacred music rises and falls in its sacred dignity on whether or not holiness is at the center. Let it be so, because if you start with a holy seed, please underline this, if you start with a holy seed, you will get a holy fruit. If you start with a holy seed, you will get a holy seed. And, I mean, a holy fruit. And as music serves the worship, so will it serve holiness if it starts in holiness and is brought by holiness. Uh -huh. Sacred music must be obedient to the laws of the liturgy. That is some deep theological statement. That sacred music must be obedient to the logos of the liturgy. It has to serve the logos, not the other way around. The Greek word for word is a word in small w and a word in big w, a capital W which implies many things, but first of all, the second person of the Holy Trinity, the Word made flesh. Sacred music must serve Christ. That simple. Sacred music must bring us to the feet of Jesus and not any other person. Our singing as choir members must bring us to the feet of Jesus, not to the feet of the choir director, not to the feet of the choir teacher, no, not to the feet of the priest or the pastor, but our sing if our singing is not taking us to the feet of Jesus Christ, then there is a problem. And when our singing is not taking us to the feet of Jesus, then we start worshipping our choir directors. We start worshipping our choir teachers. They become our small gods. In fact, more feared than our parish priests, our priests and pastors. Because Jesus Christ is effectively removed. Remember, this singing 
must bring us to the feet of Jesus and it has to serve Jesus and his mission and no other agenda. There can be no other agenda for our sacred music. Now, if you are singing as a choir is going to serve the mass well, it must serve the Christ who is anointed in love for the salvation of the world. I hope you are connecting this. Your music, your music must meet that criteria. Please allow me to say it again for purposes of internalization. If music is going to serve the mass well, it must serve Christ who is anointed in love for the salvation of the world. Music must meet that criteria. Your singing must meet that criteria. It must serve the logos, the second person of the Holy Trinity, and in so doing, brings us into the life of the Trinity. Uh -huh. I love that. I love that. That your singing will bring us into the life of the Holy Trinity. Music has the capacity to deliver us to the feet of the Holy Communion of Father, Son, and Spirit. If it serves Christ. If it serves Christ. If it bends humbly before Christ. If the notes, musical notes, if the musical notes bend in recognition of the creator of all things. Mm -hmm. A church choir's job is not just to sing beautifully, no, but rather it is to minister to the congregation and to each other in variety of ways, helping to change the world into a more loving and a peaceful place. So the question is, if your choir is full of fighting and wrangles and competition, who are you serving? Are you bringing the world into a loving and a peaceful place? So, in no particular order, allow me now to share with you what we expect you as an individual to have as a choir member. And that is what I will start tomorrow. Yesterday and today, I, want, I wanted to lay, that, to lay that foundation so that we can understand why we are singing. So that if you now find it difficult to especially understand today's devotion, my dear, you have no calling in that choir. No calling. If you are the drama queen in that choir, that every fight you are number one in the center, every misunderstanding you are there, every gossiping you are there, you are a misplaced gracious lady. You are a misplaced gentleman, completely misplaced. You have no calling. You are doing professional singing. Get out of the church music. Get out of the choir, please. Pole pole to geodoe to wejitoe to please go. And I want to say something that may not be very palatable to your ears as choir members. Without you, there can be mass. Without you, mass will be celebrated. Please stop behaving as if you are the feast. There will be mass even if all of you are dead. Thank you. Stop holding us hostage. Allah. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a beautiful day. Ha, 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 ha.